is also not smart. Why I'm getting at, what I'm trying to say is that we have given this extension several times. We have given the emergency uh, approval many times. And if in between these times we have had some improvements, we have seen the insurgency reducing, we have no reason whatsoever to even think twice before approving the extension. But the reverse is the case. You give extension, the more, more insurgency. You give extension again, another uh, 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 increased uh, insurgency. So for me, and my constituency, don't forget I'm from Gombe State. Although we're not among the three states of the emergency, we are also victims. In Gombe, we have refugee camps. In Gombe, we have, we have had bombs. In Gombe, we had all sorts of things. So my constituency, from the feelings I had from my constituency, and the feelings of Nigerians, it looks like there's an enormous, an enormous decision that this extension should not be granted. And I associate myself fully with those opposed to the extension. Let the president devise other means. There are so many means available to the president to overcome this insurgency. Let the president do something else. Let the style change so that we'll see, we'll see positive results. Now, some Nigerians have expressed fear that there might not be elections might not hold in the three northeastern states in 2015 because of the, the terrorism and insecurity in that area. Do you share this belief? Election must hold. Election must hold. Elections were held in Iraq. Elections were held in Afghanistan. Elections were held in Syria. So elections should hold in Nigeria. Elections were held in Yemen. These are volatile areas under insurgency like Nigeria. If it was in Nigeria, they had elections. People should not use the, the, the insurgency as an excuse to avoid elections. No. If you know you are going to be defeated, Work harder so that you don't get defeated, but don't use insurgency for, for, as a cover up not to face elections. We are ready for the elections in February. Elections shall take place, inshallah. Now, um, looking at the, the Senate is in its twilight years, in a sense that it was, the, the Seventh Assembly will soon be winding down. Some critical bills have not been passed, particularly the PIB. Some Nigerians had expected that the PIB would be have been concluded in the seventh Senate, and this it looks like this might not happen. Are you confident that the PIB would be passed before the end of this assembly? You see, luckily, I'm uh, the vice chairman of the, the downstream uh, petroleum committee in the Senate, and I'm deeply involved in this issue of PIB. I think even the government does not want this PIB to, to pass through. Or even the leadership, leadership of the Senate does not want this PIB thing to pass through. Because our committee, the Joint Committee, we have a committee of the three petroleum, com uh, two petroleum committees, gas and judiciary in the Senate. We are supposed to uh, do public hearings. Initially, we wanted to go abroad other countries to see how they have overcome their own problems. Because we are, they were operating, we are still operating uh, as if we were 20, 50 year, years ago. We wanted to go to some countries who, uh, which face similar problems like Nigeria. But we were not given the facilities to go. We wanted to even conduct purple hearing in the six zones to get the feelings of Nigeria on the PIB. We were not given the funds to do that. In fact, we are being stopped of funds. We are not being encouraged to do the work. We are not being given the facilities to move around and do the work. So that's why I say it looks like, looks like somewhere, somewhere along the line, some people are not interested in getting this bill passed. So this bill may pass if, if, and only if some miracles happen between now and the end of the life of this uh, Senate. All those people making noise that PIB will soon be passed. Why, why is it? We are in the committee. 
even papal hearing have not been properly conducted. We only did one papal hearing or two in the National Assembly. A very, very important bill like PIB, which is the life wire of this country. At least we need to go to Lagos, hear what people are saying. We need to go to Patakot, go to Kano, go to Sokoto, go to Ibadan, go to Inugu, go everywhere and hear what people are saying. Let us get input from them. But, but we are denied this. They want us to treat it like any other small bill. And some of us are saying that this bill is too important and we cannot play with it. So if it is not handled properly, it's not our fault. It's not the fault of the committee. It's the fault of those who are in charge of the acting things in the Senate or higher than the Senate. I don't know. Now, we know there are some contentious issues in the PIB, which the lawmakers from the north and the south have not been able to agree on. What are these contentious issues, and do you think they can be addressed? There are many other issues. There are many other issues. I don't want to be specific on this, but there are very many other contentious issues. But I know the, this for, for Frontier Exploration Force is, a, is an issue. The issue of the host community getting uh, $600 million also is also an issue. The issue of uh, the fate of the equalization fund, where by, if it's allowed, somebody in Lagos can buy uh, petrol at 20 naira, then somebody in Abuja will, will have to buy his own at 40, then somebody in Madugu will buy it at 60, then somebody in Sokoto will buy it at 70, then somebody in Patako will buy it at 10. Um, that issue has to be settled also. So there are many other issues that need to be settled. But what I'm saying was proper commitment by everybody in the system. All these things can be, all these things, all these issues can be resolved in the interest of the country. We all love Nigeria and we know that this bill is a very, very important bill. Petroleum is the life, life wire of this country. The bulk of the money that is used to run government in Nigeria comes from uh, from, from, from petroleum. So nobody nobody's supposed to joke with this uh, bill. And that's why I'm surprised. The way it is being treated with liberty, liberty by those that, that are supposed to do better than that. So there you have it. That's how the week panned out in the National Assembly. Till we meet again, have a great day. I'm Lanre Lassiter.